Hey guys, Solomon here. I hope you're having a great day. Today's video, we're going to be covering the hippopotamus defense and really what to do if you see some tension between two fee and kettled bishops. One of the setups that black can go into that gives us this is the king's Indian defense. But before that, yesterday was February 15th and yesterday was World Hippo Day. And because of that yesterday, I gave out a 30% discount code. What it is, World Hippo Day. Okay, World Hippo Day, plug that in to Gumroad. Okay, go down to the description. Go down to the pinned comment. You'll see a link there. Go there. Go to the Hippo Defense course that I made over six hours in content and plug in that discount code and you're going to get 30% off of the Hippopotamus Defense course. Only good until the end of the 20th of February. Okay, so if you're interested, make sure to head over there. Now, let's say here we're playing as white. Okay, and we play a move like G3. Black plays not F6. We fiend Keto our bishop. And then we see this move G6. Okay. If this knight is here, right, we got to play B3. I, I like to play B3 at least, okay, because I like um, having my bishop here, right, so that black can't just move their knight or, or even just have it here and always have vision on my rook, okay? For example, let's say, you know, let's say here we just kind of kept doing our thing, black fee and kettoed and had their eyes on the rook. Anytime the B pawn moves, boom, the knight moves, our rook's attacked, right? Anytime our pawn moves, the bishop is going to slice down on our rook. Now that said, most of the time, even if they play g6 move one, at some point, if you just stay patient, you just keep doing your hippo thing, at some point black usually plays e5. And then you're in the clear because the bishop can only see so far. Okay, but in this kind of instance, I like to fianchetto my second bishop just so that when this knight moves, boom, we have our bishop looking right at theirs. But what you see here is some tension, okay? Now, black here started this thing off in somewhat of a king's Indian defense style. Now, what you'll often see here is black go, okay, I mean, I guess if you're going to give me the center, I'll do it. Let's say we play e3. They keep taking some space. Knight c6. Let's tuck our knight. Again, much of the time, black will eventually just take control of the center. But let's say they don't. Let's say they castle. Let's say they play a move like b6. Okay. Here we can play a move like castling kingside. They fee and ketter their light scored bishop as well. We play this move of h3 just to prep g4 in the future if we need to. And black plays a move here like rookie eight. Okay, now, in all honesty, in this kind of position, uh, c4 is actually a pretty good move. Okay, c4, I mean, just, you know, kind of hunkering down on that pawn. If they take, our knight captures back, and all of a sudden, both of our bishops are very active, putting pressure on the opponent. This knight on c4 is a fantastic piece, and, uh, and we have moves here that are possible, like knight e5 at some point, d4, tucking the queen. Um, white here with a solid game, a playable middle game position, which is what the hippo defense is all about. However, what are we covering in today's video? Really something that you need to be careful about. Really something that you need to, that you need to watch out for if you see this tension. Okay. Let's say here we play a move like F4. This is actually a mistake because black has this idea of knight G4. Crazy looking move, but here's the idea. Okay. F4 is a mistake because the knight moved... And black's threatening to take our bishop, and they're threatening to take on e3. Now, the best move that we could play in this position is taking that knight. Okay? And okay, we lose our bishop, the rook moves, the bishop flies all the way back. Are we losing this? No. But it's not good. It's not a good position. I mean, this bishop is slicing and dicing all the way down to a1. And as white, what did we get out of it? I mean, we got doubled pawns with a pawn on g4 in front of our king. I, I'm good. I, I don't really want that. Okay, so after rookie eight, f4 is actually a, a pretty bad mistake. Okay, it's it's not a, a blunder in terms of losing the game, but it's definitely not a good idea. Okay, now again, if f4, we see the move of knight g4. Okay, and that's what we need to be careful about. All right, now. I just, I just said that we should take the knight. Let's say we don't. Let's say we go, oh my gosh, the bishop's hanging there. And when we take the bishop, oh my gosh, we'll get to take the knight and then we're up a piece. Okay, well, watch this. We take the bishop and then black takes here. And that's why f4 is a mistake because this pawn is no longer defended. Right? I mean, we could move our bishop now, but the queen's going to get lost. So we move our queen. They take the rook right off. Okay, the computer move is taking that knight back. But then black just takes our bishop. Guys, we're down three points in material. This this is not this is not ideal. So going back, right? If you see a move like rookie eight, you gotta be careful about pushing your F pawn because of knight g4 ideas, and all of a sudden that's being attacked and the bishop's being attacked. If you take their bishop, you lose the pawn and you get forked. If you take the knight, you lose your bishop. And 
you know, your position is not that great. Okay. Now, because of that, right, because of that, what's one way to solve this? One way to solve this is by playing a move like rook b1 at some point, because now, even if we play f4, right, at some point, even if we play f4, knight g4, now we're like, well, thanks for the knight. We appreciate it because the bishop's defended. There's no double threat there. So we just take the knight. Thank you. Right. Now, again, in, in this kind of position after rookie eight, I think c4 is a very solid idea, but let's look at a game that I played. In fact, the game that got me to national master and let's look at how I use this. Okay. This is the following position. Okay. And, and in this game here, I played the move of rook b1. Now, to many, that might just seem like a weird move. Like, why are you doing that? Are you doing it to match up with the rook? That was actually an added benefit. If, if black ever tried to go crazy here, the rook could eye up that rook. But that, that wasn't why. Here's the reason why. Okay. I was thinking about playing a move like g4. Now, first off, knight takes g4 right now. It's not a good move because this pawn is defended. Right? So I can just take that bishop. If you take, I mean, I'll just take back. We're fine. We're up two pieces for two pawns there. But I was looking at a move like g4, and then I was wanting to, you know, look at a move, right, like f4, right, just gaining some space. Okay, this is a very solid idea if it wasn't for black's tactical vision ideas here, right? In this case, black could have captured on g4. Now I'm in that situation. If I take this knight, I lose my bishop, and that bishop's going to be a monster, and we're down a pawn. Not good. And even worse, if I take the bishop, I get forked. Right, I gotta save my queen. The second I do, I get checked when they take off a piece. Um, now they take another piece off the board, and I'm down two points of material. Right, so you gotta be careful in positions like this. You gotta be careful to not just go crazy and let a move like knight g4 happen or knight takes g4 happen. Now, again, what's the way to solve this by playing rook b1? Okay, by playing a move like rook b1. And now from this point in the game, I felt very free. I felt fine. Right, it, this is a move here that kind of just puts everything at ease. Right, it puts everything at ease because now I can play a move like g4 and f4, and I don't got to worry about nothing because the bishop's defended. Right, the bishop's defended. You know, let's say we see a move like b5, which is what happened in the game. I played f4. Okay, if knight g4, I'm just gonna take your knight because my bishop is defended. Right, knight b4 was played in the game, and here I continued with the move of a3. Okay, and the game went on here. Um, you know, I'll leave a link to this game down in the in the you know the description below that you so you can take a look at it but i just wanted to mention this idea if the bishops are eyeing up on each other right you got to be careful in the hippo to not let that pawn on e3 become a major target and really how you do that in a weird way you actually don't defend that pawn you just defend the bishop and now that knight can't move um without you know getting captured or us being able to eye up that bishop uh, while our bishop is defended. Okay, if you have any questions on this, let me know down in the comment section below. And again, all you got to do, plug in World Hippo Day, okay, into that course uh, discount code option, and you will get 30% off of the course. I appreciate you guys, and I'm wishing you all a great day. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I wanted to give a big shout out to my Patreon supporters for the month of February in 2024. Uh, you guys have been amazing. I'm, I'm extremely blessed to have you guys uh, as part of the Patreon family. There's exclusive benefits that you gain by becoming a member. Um, so, you know, I, I highly recommend that you check it out and consider it. It's been great to, you know, hang out and get to know the patrons uh, that have joined thus far. And I hope to see you there soon. Have a good day.